Morning everyone! Today we're going to be talking about things to see in Sardinia, Italy. Fantastic! Morning everyone! I'm Rick. And I'm Andrea. And today we will take you on a virtual tour of one of the most beautiful islands in the world, Sardinia. Yes. Sardinia is known all over the world for its incredibly clear water. But there's so much more to see and do on the island. To begin, let's start with how to get there. So Sardinia has three main airports on the island. Cagliari is in the south and it's one of the biggest and best connected. On the northeast of the island, you're going to find Olbia, and it's the second biggest airport, and it's the perfect hub for the resort towns on the northeast side of the island, and famous for Costa Smeralda, or the Emerald Coast. And then the third airport on the island is Alghero, and this airport is well connected with the most Italian and European cities, and um, it's a small, the smaller of the three airports. Mm. It's located on the west coast, northwest side of the island. Keep in mind that if you decide to fly to Sardinia, you will need to rent a car. Yes, it's a good idea. Yeah, most of the beaches are just outside of the major towns, mm -hmm. so you need to drive to the beaches. So keep in mind, this is a very important tip. Great idea. So if you aren't flying, or flying isn't your thing, or you need to take your car full of stuff, um, you can get to Sardinia by ferry boat. And there's six, <laughs> six major ferry boats between Sardinia and the mainland. First one is in Cagliari, and uh, it's in the south, and it connects with Genova, Napoli, and Civitavecchia on the mainland. Then there's Olbia in the northeast, and that connects with Livorno and Civitavecchia on the mainland. Yeah, and then not very far from Olbia, there's Golf Aranci, which is also connects the northeast of the island and connects with Livorno, Civitavecchia on the mainland. Mm -hmm. Then all the way up in the north, there's Porto Torres, and this connects mostly with Genova in, on the mainland. Mm -hmm. Then down the, uh, the east coast, we have Arbatax, mm -hmm. and this mostly connects with Civitavecchia. Then to, at the end, we have Santa Teresa di Gallura, which is all the way up in the north, and this is mostly connect uh, Sardinia with Corsica, which are not uh, that far right. away. So if you want to go to France for the day... Exactly, you can uh, go to Santa, Santa Teresa. Teresa. Mm, good. Well, let's have a look at some of the best areas to visit uh, on the coast. So starting with the northeast coast of Sardinia, it's probably the most famous uh, to see on a trip to Italy. And there's lots of things to do. There, you're going to find Costa Smeralda, which is known as the Billionaire's Playground. Your favorite. <laughs> also, the resort town of Porto Cervo is its center. And uh, there you can see some of the most luxurious yachts in Italy. And in the world, probably. Yeah, that's true. Yep, Porto Cervo is almost famous for luxury shopping, hotels, and restaurants. Costa Smeralda is also, also very famous for its emerald green water. That's why the name Costa Smeralda. Oh, right, the Emerald Coast. Em Smeralda means emerald in Italian. Mm -hmm. And the water is so transparent that you can see the bottom even when the, it's uh, 20 meters deep. Wow. It's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. Also famous in Sardinia and in the East Coast is the Maddalena Archipelago, which is a group of islands that are must-see on a trip to Italy. Mm -hmm. And your, it's your favorite beaches? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, the water has incredible shades of blue and green. And the transparency is unreal. Like, you won't find this elsewhere. I've never seen it elsewhere. The most famous spots to see in the archipelago in Sardinia uh, are the islands of Budeli and Spargi. First, um, Budeli has uh, turquoise water of the uh, Manto della Madonna. And uh, the island of Spargi is famous for its Spiaggia dell'Amore. And the island of Caprera has deep blue water at Tahiti Beach. Yeah, this is beautiful. Another very important destination on the northeast coast is the area around Santa Teresa di Gallura, which is right, way up on the north. There are um, some charming little coastal towns, and you can see some of the most beautiful rugged coastline with deep blue water and spectacular red granite. I love it there. And well, there's an amazing agriturismo there. Absolutely. And lastly, in the east coast, there's the town of Olbia. And south of Olbia, the San Teodoro. There's some of the very beautiful white sandy beaches 
with a big rocky island of Tavolara in the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the water are calm and the beaches are perfect for family and children. Oh, that's, that's a good tip. Yeah, absolutely. We also have the East Coast to discover. The most famous area on the East Coast is Golfo di Orosei, or the Orosei Gulf, and the resort town of Caligonone. And one of the best things to do in Caligonone is to rent a boat and tour around. Also, you'll find some of the best beaches that are in the area. For example, one of the most famous beaches in the area is Calo Golorice and Calo Luna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a mouthful. <laughs> but both beaches have incredibly white sand and turquoise water. And the, the, best, the best way to get there is by boat. Uh, actually, it's the only way to get there because <laughs> walking it takes forever. <laughs> Swimming. Another area to visit is the southeast coast. The main center of the southeast coast is the town of Villa Simius, and the area is known as Costa Rey. This area is famous for long sandy beaches and calm water. It's another beautiful place uh, if you have family and children because the water is always so calm. Uh -huh. And the area has many hotels and vacation homes for rent, and you can get there from uh, the city of Cagliari. It's about half an hour away, so take a ferry boat to Cagliari and hmm. go there. Hmm. Not bad. So, uh, moving on to the southwest coast, we're going to find tourist destinations in this area. And those are, that areas are, are called Pula, Kia, Portopino, and the island of San Pietro. Pula is a charming little coastal town with some great archaeological Phoenician sites mm -hmm. nearby. Phoenicians. Interestingly, um, you know, some might think that Rome is the archaeological center of Italy, but actually there are many archaeological mm -hmm. sites outside of Italy. Absolutely. We put an article here mm -hmm. about the archaeological site of Italy. Right. And a few kilometers west of Pula, you can find the area, the amazing beaches of Chia. Mm -hmm. This area has some of the best beaches on the island. Mm -hmm. They're fabulous. Also, the beach of uh, Su Judeo, with the clear water and the white sand, is incredibly beautiful. Interestingly, in the nearby lagoon, it's possible to see many pink flamingos. I didn't think there was any, but... <laughs> Another famous beach near Kia is Suturedda. Suturedda beach has a beautiful calm water and white sand. Also, the ruins of an old tower are overlooking the beach from the top of the hill. It's absolutely amazing. Yep, definitely. So far, there's a lot about, a lot about the, the ocean and the mm -hmm. turquoise water. Now, west of Kia, you can find the beautiful beach of Porto Pino and the white sand dunes. Porto Pino is another amazing beach with crystal clear water and white powdery sand. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Another famous area on the south, southwest coast of the island is San Pietro. San and Pietro. San Pietro. And you can reach this island from the little port town of Porto Scuso in about a half hour on a ferry ride. The main town of San Pietro is Carlo Forte, with its colorful houses and narrow cobblestone streets. The island is famous for, it, for the tuna fish industry and has some of the best tuna in the world. But mm -hmm. He wouldn't I don't know. Do it. <laughs> Moving on the west coast, San Giovanni di Sini is one of the most famous beach destinations on the west coast. Mm. This little town is not very popular with the tourists, yet, mm. yet. In this town you can see the archaeological site of Taros, the Phoenician town. And wow, the view of the crystal blue water from the archaeological site is absolutely stunning. I mean, it's remarkable. North of San Giovanni, you can reach the um, Isa Arenas beach. This is a very long beach, has some crystal clear water, and um, but it's a little bit near the time, so you have to be careful there. Interesting, it's famous for a coarse sand that remember, remem, resembles mm. a grain of sand. Yes. And continuing north from Isa Arenas, uh, you can get to the old town of Boza. Boza is a charming town that has a medieval castle out overlooking the colorful houses of the old village. To get to the west coast, you can fly into Cagliari and then drive north for about two hours, or you can fly into the little airport of El Guero and then drive south for about an hour and a half. Um, since it's not really easy to re reach the west coast of Sardinia, it's probably the least touristy part of the island. But um, here you can still find untouched beaches and things to see. Absolutely. 
And next we have the northwest coast. The main center of the northwest coast is the city of Alguero. Alguero indeed has the old Catalan city walls and bastions. They're still around the old town. Downtown Alguero has some charming streets with um, many picture-perfect views. Also near Alguero there are many sandy beaches with um, incredibly crystal clear water. The area is very popular among scuba divers because it's the, the, the deep water there are great for wonderful dives. Mm -hmm. Alguero maintained its Catalan roots. Cool. Yep, and um, about 40 kilometers or um, 24 miles north of Alguero, you can find uh, one of the most picturesque beaches in Sardinia, and it's called Stintino La Pelosa Beach. Mm -hmm, beautiful. Yeah. This beach has incredible white sand and shallow crystal clear water. Uh, the colors are unique and the view is breathtaking. Unfortunately, due to its popularity, it's also one of the busiest beaches yeah. in Sardinia. In peak season, it's almost impossible to find a spot on this beach. And in the background of La, La Palosa Beach, uh, you can see the big island of Azinara. Azinara was home to a maximum security jail until the 90s. Yep. <laughs> But since then, Azinara has become a natural park and it can be visited with, uh, with specialized tour guides. And apparently it's amazing. Hmm. And then if you drive about an hour north from Stintino, you can reach the medieval town of Castel Sardo. Hmm. This old uh, fortress has a charming little street and picturesque uh, perfect photo um, opportunity from the top of the castle towers. Hmm. Are, are there... No, we've talked a lot about beaches, but are there other things to see and do in Sardinia? Well, yes, Sardinia has much more to see than uh, go to the beautiful sandy beaches. I mean, I like beaches. I like beaches too. For, this, for example, the interior of the island is not touristy or expensive at all. For instance, you can explore the tall mountains of the General Gentoo, mm. with this um, lush tree forest and very beautiful views. Also, many farms on the island nowadays have a beautiful farm stay, agriturismo in Italian, mm -hmm. with swimming pools and amazing farm to table restaurants right in built in. Yeah, they're delicious. Absolutely. So, agriturismo, it reminds me of the amazing cheeses in Sardinia. Oh, yeah. The main food in Sardinia is based on sheep and pigs. For example, one of the most important dairy products of the island is a cheap cheese called Pecorino. Delicious. Yep, and there's many varieties of this delicious cheese depending on the production area mm -hmm. and, and the age uh, of the cheese. The mildest um, is, uh, is a young Pecorino or called Pecorino Giovane, uh, while the more pungent and flavorful ones uh, are about one to five years old, and they're called Pecorino Stagionato. Absolutely. And don't forget the Sardinian cure meats. Mm. Oh, yeah. Sardinia has some great tradition on cure meats that are usually made of pork or wild boar. Oh, actually, yeah. there's tons of wild boar in mm. Sardinia. Sardinian cure meat uh, is uh, usually served as an appetizer in a traditional Sardinian dinner. Mm. Another traditional food in Sardinia is suckling pig. It's a suckling pig roasted on a spit for many, many hours and served on a court tray. Traditional Sardinian kind of pasta are the ricotta filled ravioli mm -hmm. or the Sardinian gnocchi with sausage and tomato sauce. And in the Northeast, it's one of my favorite dish. It's a bread dish. It's almost like a lasagna and it's called zuppa calorese and it's oh, layers of bread so and yeah. cheese. It's so good. Yeah, and don't forget pane carazal. It's the typical flatbread of Sardinia. It's super thin and crispy. And what you do is you drizzle some olive oil and have a little bit of salt and rosemary on it, and it's just delicious. And in the Alguero area, area, due to its Catalan influence, the local cuisine is very seafood heavy. Mm -hmm. The most popular dish is actually a lobster salad served warm with a lot of tomatoes and red onions. This dish is called Aragosta a la Catalana. On the island of San Pietro, the most popular ingredient is tuna fish, served raw or grilled or even baked. Absolutely. Sardinia has some very good wines as well. The most famous one is a red, it's called Canonau. It's very robust and uh, full body wine. It's better suited, with, suited for meat dishes. And the most popular white wine of Sardinia is called Vermentino, a crisp, fresh wine, fruity and perfect for a summer dinner. 
In Sardinia, one of the most popular uh, bushes that grows wild is called myrtle. Oh, yeah. And this wild bush produces tiny blackberry. And in the fall, um, the Sardinian make a liqueur out of this. And it's called myrtle liqueur. This yep. is a very popular sweet floral digest digestive served ice cold in the summer and room temperature in the winter. And it makes you digest that. It's delicious. Oh, I know. Guys, all of this is making me really hungry. Yeah, actually, I'm going to start planning our next trip to Sardinia. Speaking of which, let us know in the comment if you are coming to visit when the pan pandemic is over mm -hmm. and which area of Sardinia you would like to see the most. Yeah, We're looking forward to hear from you. That's a great idea. And guys, don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss a video. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> Thank you guys. Bye.